Hello, it's Crafty Rhea. I am so glad that you are joining me today. I will be featuring some die cuts that I received from In Love Arts, and I will be doing a tutorial to show you how I used them and some ideas for them. In Love Arts graciously let me pick some items from their website in return for doing a couple of videos for them. In Love Arts also gave me a coupon code for all of my viewers, and it is this G-36480, and you get a 20% discount on your order, and they have free shipping on $25, and that's worldwide shipping. So that is pretty awesome, and I will put my affiliate links in the description box below. This first set is called Splicing Sunflower Decor Dies, and it's $10.58. And it comes with these seven dies you see here, all five different flowers, and then two centers. And I will show you some of the things that I cut out and made with them. I will move them aside. They are for layering, so that is really cool. Or you can use them individually. Here is one basic flower that I did with brown and red, and I layered two of the die cuts together. And then here is another one where I layered a whole bunch together. And here are some others with some more spring colors. And I love how they look when they're layered. This one is my favorite so far. So I'm going to show you how I make that and how they layer together really easy. I used some scrap paper and I cut out several colors in that piece. That's the the backmost piece. And then I have this next one. This is the next piece, and I have several colors again of it. I just went through my scrap paper. I wanted to do shades of red, orange, and yellow, and brown, so I could do a sunflower. And then we have that one. And then there's this one. And I have a bunch of the center pieces from all the different colors. So what I want to do is I'm going to use some Elmer's glue to hold it together. You don't need anything fancy. I'm going to start with this piece that is the most solid of all of the pieces. As you can see, the holes get bigger as we go. So this would be the backmost piece, the piece that is the most solid, which is this die cut. So I'm going to start with the darkest color for that. I'm going to use the brown and I will put that right there and I'll move the other ones out of the way. And then I'm going to use the one with the next biggest holes, which is this one. And that's the die. As you can see, the holes get bigger. And I'm going to take this dark orange and layer it right on top of that brown. I'm going to line up the outsides of it, the petals of the flower, and then you can see you've got some of the brown peeking through the orange. And then I'm going to take the next one, which has the next size of holes. Actually, that's the wrong die. This one. And I'm going to go with the next lighter color that I have, this orange color. And then that lines up on them as well. So you, you can have this three layer flower like that. And let me go ahead and glue these three layers together. So you have those three with the graduated holes. So I'm going to just put some of the Elmer's glue. I'm just putting it in the center 
You can use any kind of adhesive you like. If you have glue dots, that works great. Or some tape, that also works great. I'm going to put a piece of white behind here so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to glue this one on because these three match up pretty perfectly with the outside edge. You'll see what I mean in just a second. There we go. And the glue gives me just an, an extra minute or so to line these up. And I'm just going to press it down really good in the center. So there we have three layers of it. You could see the brown peeking through, the orange, and then the lighter orange. And then for the next layer, I have this one, and this also matches really well. It also lines up, and you can put it where it's offset that way, or it's offset that way. This one will be offset a little bit. I guess I should have said that. And then this one here could go on the very top of that one. So then you have your yellow. So let's go ahead and put this one down. Now this has the neat pattern here. So you could make that the top of your flower if you want. Or you can go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way. Might as well. So that's how I put that one on there. And then I will put this yellow one on the very top. And I'm going to line it up with this flower, with this last one. And I have a brown center that I will be putting there. I poked out all the little holes so you can see through it so that yellow will show through. And this glue dries clear so if it comes up through the hole that's okay. And there we have a sunflower. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. And how easy was that to make? That was super easy. I love, love, love it. And then I have all of these other colors where I can mix and match layers. And this is how it came out with the spring colors. So you can do it either way. You can make it a sunflower or you can make it a spring flower or any color you desire. So I will set these aside. I will use these for other projects. I went ahead and cut a bunch out as I was going along. While I had one big piece of paper, I got as many different um, shapes on there as I could. And I have plenty to make more flowers with. So that is that set of dies. And like I said, that is called the Splicing Sunflower Decor Dies. And it is $10.58 for that entire set. And of course, you can use them all together or single or however you like. The next die I'm going to share with you is this house die. It is called the Gothic architecture house box die and it is seven dollars and 72 cents for this one piece I have wanted a house die for such a long time and I'm really glad I got this one I really like it when you cut it out this is how it looks and I went ahead and poked out all of the little holes around the windows and that's really cute and it folds up and you tuck this little flap in. You fold these in. 
and you tuck it tuck that little flap and you have your house and what I did with this one to make the windows look authentic I used a piece of white vellum behind the windows and I wanted like a glow like a light was on at home as you can see there's a little bit of a glow in there you can see what I did I used a piece of this yellow mulberry paper because it lets the light through a little bit behind the vellum so you can kind of see that kind of looks like there's a light on at home so there we have that basic box and you can do anything with these you can make a whole village and make them all different shapes and sizes you can use brick pattern paper to make a brick house or you know whatever you have in your stash that you like to use very versatile I'm going to show you how to do something a little non-traditional with this die other than making a house I would love to make like a whole village of houses and I think you can even put two together to make like this as the whole front of it you can work on it and um, make it any shape and size you really want So I'm going to make a Christmas card out of this piece. I have my card base. I'm going to use this dark blue. It's a really heavyweight dark blue cardstock that I happen to have. And I'm going to recycle this Christmas card with this die, believe it or not. I went through my Christmas card stash to see what cards I had that would look good. And I wanted something that would look good on the inside of a house. And here we have this Christmas tree, the stockings, and the fireplace. And I know it, this image is huge compared to what the house is, but just bear with me. Play, we'll play along and pretend it works. So here's what we have. So I'm first going to cut the front of this card off like I always do. And as I put it together, you'll kind of see the method to my madness here. I'm going to cut out the sentiment for the inside. I'm going to leave that little stocking there because it's cute. And then I have this piece. While I have this out, this whole front is not going to fit on the card. And it's also too wide for this. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cut it down and I'm going to cut it right along this. There's, I don't think you can see it very well. There's a score line right there where it would fold and I'm going to cut right along that score line. I'm going to turn it upside down and line that line up in my paper trimmer. And I actually moved it over a tad bit so that score line still shows but I didn't want to cut that piece since that sticks out a little bit. I'm going to take my scissors and trim off these little edge pieces there. There's a little piece sticking out, so I'm just going to trim that off. So there we have that. That is our house. And I want to put this behind it. And I want to see where I want it to line up. Do I want to go all the way to the left with this or all the way to the right? I think all the way to the left with this. So I'm going to get my pencil and I'm going to turn this over and I'm just going to mark on the back where I need to cut. 
just to give me an idea, I need to cut just inside of those lines. I'm actually going to trim this edge off a little bit because I have a little bit of that fold and it's going to not lay flat if I don't do that. So I have that left over and I have this piece. And as you can see, that fits now behind the house really well. I'm going to center this on the card and I'm going to adhere this piece down just like that. And I do want to put something behind this piece up here. And I'm going to take just a scrap of this here and just cut out a little square. I think that should fit. There we go. That fits behind it. And I'm going to just adhere it to the back of this window. There we go, and it looks like there's just some fun stuff happening up there. It looks like there's something inside that window. And then I'm going to take some pop dots and put behind this because I want to raise it up over this um, background just to give it some dimension. And through the magic of television, as Carol Duvall would say, I have pop dots put on the back. And then I'm just going to line this up. There we go. And there we have some pretty stuff in the windows. But of course we can't really stop there, you know. That's kind of plain. I have these stickers and I thought this Christmas tree would go really good here. And I think I'll put one on the other side of the door. Just to kind of take up some of that white space out of the front from the front. Okay, and of course, because I can't stop there, I'm going to have to decorate the front of this card a little bit. And I have some bling. I'm going to put some Christmas lights on this house so it's not so white. I'm just going to start across the top here. And then I'm going to put some around there, kind of where those holes are around the roof and I will put some around the doorway because the doorway looks pretty plain. Now I could put some around each window if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. 
So we have that. Very cool. I really like it so far. This part up here is a little bit plain, so I'm going to go ahead and put a sentiment up there. I have these stickers, and I thought this Happy Holidays one that has a house on it looked pretty good. And since that's really a tag and there's a hole there, I'm going to put a piece of bling in that hole. I have this red piece here. I'm just going to put a red piece of bling right on there. There we go. And then I'll put the sentiment on the inside. I'm going to line it on this red paper. This, this is red construction paper. This is just a scrap I had in my stash. I have a hard time finding a really good color red cardstock. So I did find, my husband found this red construction paper for me so and this works perfectly it's such a good color and it works great on the cards that I recycle it's a perfect Christmas color red and for construction paper I prefer using wet adhesive the Elmer's glue whenever possible There we go. And then that card is done. And that's just one more way that you can use that box house die. You can do lots of things with it. Think outside the box and find ways to use your different dies. I hope you enjoyed these flowers and the boxes. These were a lot of fun to make. I really enjoyed making them. I hope you enjoyed watching. I will put the links to In Love Arts in the description box below along with my coupon code where you can save 20%. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do click on that subscribe button down there in the corner and then click on the bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. If you like what you see, please do give this a thumbs up. I do want to give you an update. I know in my last video for In Love Arts, one of my viewers had not received her order, and she did receive her order. I did reach out to customer service, and they sent her orders out. So she did receive both parts of her order. So all is well with that. If you ordered from me using my affiliate links or my coupon code, and you have not received your order, and it's been a really long time, please send me an email. My email address is in the description box below, and I will reach out to the company for you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until the next video, you know what to do. Go get crafting. Bye-bye.